Okay, on this video, uh, and probably the last one in the series, we're going to go ahead and take a look at um, basic use of the airbrush, and uh, we'll go over a couple of techniques that will help you in your modeling and uh, wargaming uh, painting. Okay, what we have here is a messed up model, actually. This is one of the models I got in a huge box from eBay. Yeah, you could buy, you know, for extra parts, spare parts, and conversions and stuff. So I have no worries about messing this up. So right now I have uh, some black primer loaded. Okay, so, so basic techniques is don't spray too close. You spray too close, you get buildup, like that. And it splatters all over. Okay? Now, if you spray too far, what you'll end up doing is uh, the paint will atomize before it even gets to um, uh, the surface of the model, and what you get is these gritty, dirty uh, paint job, and you'll have little bumps and stuff. Um, so you have to get it about maybe, I don't know, four to five inches, maybe six, it depends. You, what you have to do is just practice on it. Now, let's take a look here. When you want to uh, spray, you don't want to spray at one spot. Okay, if you just let it spray at one spot, all it do is going to build up paint, and then it's going to get really wet and just start running. Okay, what you want to do is just do passes over uh, the model surface, right, like that. Okay, until you get used to it. And then what you could do is just go layer over layer. What you want to do is just put one thin layer over the uh, next until you get the good uh, plasticity that uh, you're looking for. Okay, and this is just for um, bigger paint jobs, you know, more wider area paint jobs and stuff. Okay, and that's the basics of uh, spraying on uh, paint with an airbrush. Now, when you want to do more details, you want to lower down the PSIs to maybe about, I don't know, 20, 15. And as you can tell, it comes out just pretty softly, right? So that way you can get closer without building up paint, okay? So what you want to do is when you're doing details and you want to run a thin line, pull the trigger back just a little. Make sure PSI, PSI is down low, get the right amount, and start moving. It's going to take a little practice, get in these smaller type of detailed lines. And that's what you're going to have to do to keep practicing uh, airbrushing, is to uh, get the control down correctly. And you'll be able to pretty much do lots of detailing work and stuff like that just with an airbrush. So again, it's all about how much air is coming out of your airbrush and how much you pull back on the trigger as well as how far you are from uh, the model. Now there is another factor that you have to kind of sort of keep in mind is the temperature. If the temperature in your room that you're working with is cold, it's going to take longer for the um, paint to dry, right? So when you're spraying, you might have to move back just a little in a colder room to get that right amount of uh, coverage on your um, on your model. If you're in a warmer room or a hot room, your paint's going to dry faster before it even hits the uh, model. So if you're spraying and you notice that you're getting this buildup, this gritty buildup, that means um, your paint is drying faster before it even gets to the surface of the model. So you might have to move in a little with your airbrush. And yeah, there are some places uh, that where people do have trouble with the temperature in the room. I mean, if it's really humid or if it's really dry, that does play in the factor of uh, using your airbrush. But again, when you first get your airbrush, it's all about using it, taking it, get uh, just, you know, a cardboard or um, a model that you're not uh, worried about messing up on, like, you know, junk models like this, and um, practice on it. Like, you know, there's a panel line on this uh, wing here, right? You can practice about trying to get it as thin as you can to fill in that panel line. Alright, and then you can adjust, you know, 
the PSIs, moving up and down and stuff like that, just to get the hang of it. Now, at first it might be a little frustrating uh, to you to get this down right, but trust me, you just keep practicing and you will get it down. Most important thing is being patient with all this, and then you'll get it down. Right, here's some cool techniques you can um, do with an airbrush. First of all, with the dual action airbrush, and this is why I suggest dual action airbrush, is that if you press down the trigger and not pull back the trigger, all you get is air. And what you get is cano air, you know, instant cano air. So when you're spraying your model, and you're spraying paint onto it, you get the coverage in, and you'll notice, you know, there's a wet spot. Just hold down the trigger, just blow out regular air with no paint, and you can use it to help dry uh, the paint faster. Okay, and that's one of the cool things about uh, dual action airbrush. Now, another cool thing about using the air out of the airbrush is uh, there's a cool technique with um, splattering mud on your model. For example, on this rhino here, there are certain areas, if you can see, that has splatter marks. on the uh, uh, model itself. That's done by using pigments and then watering it down so that it's really goopy. Okay, and then take dabbing it with a brush. Okay, and then putting it up against the area where you want the splatter to happen and just squirt some um, air out of the airbrush. The air is going to squirt out of the airbrush and then on the brush itself and then just blowing that um, goop onto the model surface giving it that splatter look. So you can use your airbrush not just for paint, but for the air that's coming out of it. Now one of the cool techniques about using airbrush is pre-shading. Uh, pre-shading panel lines on a bigger model like a plane or a tank or something will help give you that really cool shading effect. Uh, what you want to do is turn down the PSI's to about 15, 20, and then just go over the panel lines with black or a really dark color over the uh, actual base color you're going to be using. Now, this is before you put in the base color here. When you're uh, pre-shading, it does not have to be perfect straight lines. Simply be simple lines like this. Okay, there you have it. It's pre-shaded. Okay, once this is pre-shaded, we'll spray the base coat on top. And we're using light gray here. This is supposed to be a... F14A Tomcat, so it's usually gray or ghost gray, but I don't have any ghost gray on me right now. What you want to do is go ahead and spray thin layers on top of it. And you just keep spraying until you can barely see the pre shaded lines. And again, you don't want to keep the uh, spray in one area, just keep spraying over it. You can tell the pre-shaded lines are disappearing. Here, now you got a good base coated on it now. What you want to do is wait for it to dry. And in this case, I'm spraying air through my airbrush. It'll dry a bit. What happens is the pre-shade line starts coming through when the paint starts to dry. Okay, and then what you can do is if uh, you want to cover it a little bit more, you go over it with more base coat paint until you get the results you're looking for. And that's the result of pre-shading. Now using the same pre-shading technique, you do it with uh, war gaming models with your figures. It makes it really easy. Now once you have this primer, this is a uh, Space Wolf uh, figure. Once it's primered, um, what you want to do is use the same type of uh, technique, the pre-shading, uh, to get um, some cool shading effects. So what you want to do is take black or really dark color, assuming that your base color of your um, figure is going to be a lighter color. It won't work with dark colors here. Okay, and then what you want to do is just shade in all the recesses of the actual model. Like right here on the legs here, we'll go ahead and fill that in. Okay, inside the armpit is always good. Maybe around the neck area here. Okay, and between the uh, back and the backpack is always good too. 
And uh, anywhere that looks like there should be a dark recess, you know, where the shadows would be uh, uh, landing on top on the on the figure. Here. Back of the knees. Always good place. Uh, here. Underneath the armpit on the side here. Okay, now that we've got the areas all pre shaved where the shadows would uh, fall, uh, we'll go ahead and base coat it. So here we go. What we do is just go ahead and pass. Make passes on your model. Remember, don't hold it in one place. Okay? Otherwise, it'll just build up paint and you'll get an ugly mess of goop. Okay, and then we'll stop, take a look. And as you can tell right now, the uh, somber gray uh, color is starting to show through. The white parts is brighter, the uh, darker parts is darker, so that you get the shading effect. Let's go ahead and add more uh, layers to it. Line this up a bit. Go ahead and dry this up a bit. There you go, a little bit more uh, somber uh, gray onto the uh, model here. And you just keep doing, keep putting on layers until uh, it gets to the point where it looks good. One technique you should start building up is to sp spray a thin layer and then dry it with the air and then spray it in another layer dry it with the air and then you just keep doing that and it just moves things along a lot quicker final results you see the subtle uh, shadows on the figure and the white part of the primer uh, lightens the actual uh, base coat so you get this uh, effect, the shadow effect uh, going throughout your figure now if you want the shadows to show through a lot more, thin down the base coat color a little bit more than you usually would and then uh, do it layered that way. Fortunately, the best way to show you is actually on a more finished model. On this Rhino here, um, as you can tell on the top here, you see the pre-shading, so the panel lines of the pre-shading. And it gives it that weird look. It's not always just one color to uh, the model. It gives it more dimension. And here you go, more appreciating um, effects on a uh, dreadnought. Here as you can t see, uh, you could actually work with this pre-shading technique and get um, you know, more shading in certain areas. Now for example on this back panel here, I move the uh, darkness or the black out a little bit more on that panel and that's what I mean by not making it straight it should be random uh, wide lines uh, uh, narrow lines and stuff like that and then when you put the base coat on top the darkness shows through and you get this uh, effect and you create this effect of a wear and uh, sunlight you know hitting the uh, paint job and then just wearing it down in certain places it's not always even in the YouTube community, there are a lot of uh, scale modelers that uses airbrush techniques. There's still some um, out there that don't use an airbrush, but uh, there are a lot in the scale modeling community that uses airbrushing. Uh, if you ever need help, you know, ask me anytime. There's Scale Model Madman. Go check him out. Um, subscribe to his channel. There's uh, Scale Model Medic. Okay, Scale Model Attic, which is Scott. On uh, Wargaming, um, there's less at Austin Paint Shop. Uh, uses airbrush. Uh, he could help you out with any questions as well. You could ask me. He has Darth Burns. Okay, check out Darth Burns. He's a big uh, airbrush user for uh, war gaming. And uh, yeah, a lot more other people out there. And uh, when I can get to them, I'll always do shout outs and uh, let you guys know. And uh, that's it for this video. Thank you for uh, joining me and uh, through this adventure here. There might be you know, another round robin after this. And if I could get those two people together and do uh, you know the last video. It's kind of like a question and answer type of thing, Q&A uh, video with some uh, people who use airbrushing and stuff uh, for their hobbies. So, thank you for joining me on this uh, series. And uh, if you like it, like it on YouTube, favorite it, and uh, subscribe to me. There's a lot more techniques out there uh, with the airbrush, and I'll try to cover some of it and uh, make more tutorials on using the airbrush. For more tutorial videos on how to paint your figures, check out Les's channel at Awesome Paint Job. For cool terrain tips and tutorials, check out Chris at Terrain Noob.